Right, welcome to Crew Tube Shed Adventures. As you can see, I've been rubbing down the beam. I've not bothered to video it because, I mean, it's literally just a wire wheel and a drill. And then I've sprayed it with some uh, direct to rust spray paint, black gloss, which has given it a, quite a fancy appearance. So I stripped everything off, except the ABS and the stub axles. The rest is in there, so it's going to get treated separately. When the weather's nice, because it is not at the moment, we'll get this out, we'll clean the other end of it, tart it up, and then get the old one off. The absolute state of this shed. And there we go, there's the rear axle, giving a good old coat of black paint to tart it up a little. So, get the old one off, put this on, and then I can take my time getting all the calipers and hubs sorted. We might as well paint the brake calipers, we might as well paint the brake calipers whilst we're off in this. Oh, that doesn't look as described. Let's give it a shake. Nope, can't do that one. Either. That's better. Familiarish colour for under the bonnet. And just as a quick test, there's one coat on the caliper carrier. Next to the shiny black. Yeah. I think that'll do. Right, back in the shed. Uh, in a good from 10 paces away paint job. Both calipers are done. So yeah, we just need to put, put everything back together again. Simple as that, easy peasy. Right, and to get this rear beam off, it's going under here, which is unpleasant on a wet day. And follow the rear beam back, and we have one, two, three, somewhere incredibly crusty bolts. And then follow this on the other side. These are notoriously bad to get off. Don't use impact guns on these, because whilst they're captive on the inside, they will spin around. And let's give it a wire rush off to try and get them off. They look like 17 mil jobs. Mm. Extra crusty. Not too bad. Not too bad. Certainly could have done with a better wire brush on them to start with. I can't tell whether I'm they're actually loosening or I'm just rounding them off. Which I hope I'm not doing. Just an extension bar just to make it easy because I can do it from the side of the car. Probably too long a extension bar actually. Right, 
right, so these are those three bolts on the inside, and they are now all spinning. So despite my best efforts, with plenty of WD-40, wire brushing it off, uh, they are now all loose and spinning whenever I rotate things underneath. So yeah, it's time for some escalation of violence. Okay, so escalated violence. Two out of three I just sent with the uh, impact gun and they came off. So that was the back two, so they're now there. Um, to do this properly, I should probably have disconnected everything here, as I don't think I'll be able to get this all done in a day, just because of my personal life and toddler. As I was saying, I don't think I'll be able to get this all done today. I'm going to leave the suspension all attached, and uh, this might just drop down instead. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do the other side now. Yep, same story the other side, back two, undid fine, front one, not fine, so, yeah, again, I guess uh, we're going to chop a chop something. Of course this would be a lot easier if I hadn't installed a bucket seat, I'm trying to get everything in through this gap. <sighs> Time to get serious. So if I can actually But also interesting really. Doing this powered off my new daily driver, which is an Ionic 5, which if you don't follow me on social media, this is replaced the Skoda. Great car, I'll do a video on it at some point, but let's chop these bolts. And we're going to try and chop a chop a groove in the edge. Stop for a second and uh, reevaluate. Right, so we jacked the rear beam up a load so I can jam a screwdriver under here to lift this nut up a bit higher. So it's not quite so far in the recessed bit. Now I've got a wheel trying to kill me. one half done and I've made a right mess of this. I think what we do is to save cutting even more holes in this shell. We'll just turn this around. So when I inevitably do the same thing again we're cutting in the same holes. But we might as well give it a go with one flat side before we accidentally cut some more holes in the car.
Right, this bolt, wherever it is, it's not even moved a thread with all that, and now it's just rounding itself off, so... All that was for nothing, so I think we might have to drop the fuel tank and uh, go for these crusty ones, which I don't really want to do. Unless you just drop it off there. Hmm. Right, booger doggers are not working. So we'll do the old fashioned way. That's balanced up against. On the inside, so I'm probably bending the inside of the cart. Just oh, it's doing something. I don't know if it's tightening or coming off. Should probably check. Am I doing it? Oh, there goes the things inside. Puffing and puffing and scratching. Has done all of that extra thread there. Uh, we'll keep going. Two weeks to get that off. Oh, it's hot. That's not going to come out for a while. Right, so we disconnected the braided brake lines and they're just pouring everywhere now. Next up is disconnecting the ABS sensors. Just go into this box, we should just pop open and then disconnect the plug like any other plug. Alright, so we just peeled back one of the heat shields and here's where the handbrake cable goes to. So we're just going to undo that nut and then hopefully the two wires. Daddy, We've got a little helper. Uh, hopefully help. we'll undo because then they're just held in there by tension. Right, and after much fighting, the other side is off. Exactly the same problem happened again. One rear beam taken off, ready for scrap. Right, so that's the RS beam. The director rust paint has not done a great job, but better than it was. 
So I think we're going to get a jack under the middle here, lift it up, slide it in, and then we'll put the new bolts in because we're not putting those evil things back in again. Right, so these are the evil things that were in there before. A square headed, square shank thing. The square bit is too small than the square hole, which is weird. So they put this awful clip on, which then squeezes up against it in the too big hole. And then that is what is trying to make it captive. But obviously, as soon as any amount of force goes, this just slips around. And then there's nothing to hold on to. See where the bolt was. Sorry, the nut. So we have got some normal hex-headed 10.9 screws, bolts. And uh, I can't see anything on the screen because it's too bright. I'm hoping nuts only went up to here, where the absence of rust is. Hmm, we've got some new nylock. That's as well. Right, so this is jacked up in an extremely jank manner. But we've got this one on just enough, so I'm now going to go play with the other side. I'm going to get these two end ones in, and then I can move the jack hopefully to get things otherwise. Right, caliper time. Can't see a thing. These are all back on, they're all finger tightly bolted on, so I need to tighten them all up. I'm not going to bore you by showing you how to tighten bolts. Uh, suspension ones need to be whizzed in. Uh, and then we can let everything down and put some calipers on. When I find out where on earth is the shed, I put the caliper bolts. Oh, it's a hot day, but we've got the brake calipers on. Uh, basically, assembly is the reverse of this assembly, which was in part one. Two bolts, two bolts, and then we thread this back through the same way the other one was. I mean, it's not done yet, it's only through that hole to get out of the way. But yeah, do the other side. And there we go. All put back together, all tightened up. Got the old crummy discs on, just for now. I've not reattached the ABS and the brake lines yet, uh, but they're pretty self-explanatory to do. I've not done the brake lines because uh, I'm probably going to run them internally for just something a bit different. There we go. And you can already tell, like, the wider track there. And that's without spacers on. So yeah, how to swap from a drum brake rear beam or rear axle to a disc brake one with a lot of pain in between.